Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the summer of 1979, a series of unusual animal sightings occurred in the Somerset countryside, southwestern United Kingdom. Rumours began to circulate that some sort of large, dangerous creature was stalking the woodland that surrounded Brassknocker Hill, a small settlement lying outside the city of Bath. Described variously as a long-fanged, four-foot-tall creature resembling either a bear, baboon, chimpanzee, gibbon, or lemur, the mystery began when locals Ron and Betty Harper discovered that an unknown creature had stripped whole sections of their ancient oak tree, leaving large gouge marks in the trunk. Squirrels usually strip the tops of branches, but the damage here looked as if it had been done by an animal hanging underneath. The bark had been stripped off all branches from 20 feet up. Only one month later, the number of mutilated trees had grown to over 50, and the woods were plunged into an eerie silence after almost all the local birds had seemingly vanished. None of the locals had any idea what may lie behind these enigmas, and many simply paid little attention and carried on with their daily activities as normal. Meanwhile, 81-year-old Brassknocker Hill resident Frank Green took a very serious approach to the matter, taking up a day and night shotgun vigil. As he told local media at the time, I am very fond of some animals, but I reckon this creature could be dangerous and I'm taking no chances. Despite such stellar protection methods, Mr. Green never encountered any monstrous beast, although the idea of a grumpy, trigger-happy old man patrolling the area with a loaded shotgun is just as frightening as any unseen creature. Soon, the tree ripping spread to the nearby village of Monkton Coombe. The first actual sighting of said beast soon followed, when an anonymous man informed the local press that he had encountered an unusual animal while driving down the narrow lane near Brassknocker Hill. Late at night, the man drove his car around a steep bend in the road when his headlight suddenly illuminated a large animal standing by the side of the road. It was a bear-like animal, roughly four feet tall at the shoulder, with dark fur and white rings around its eyes. As the man drove past, the beast stood up on its hind legs, standing alert. Given that our unnamed witness didn't stop his car for a better look, he must have witnessed this bear for at most a few seconds. But from the description, particularly the rings around the eyes and the overall size, this animal sounds to me an awful lot like a spectacled bear. These bears are rare and quite cryptic in their native Andean South American range, and given the year of this encounter, may suggest that it was a former exotic pet released into the countryside to avoid the Dangerous Wild Animals Act. The ursine identity of the beast does make sense, as bears will strip bark off trees while looking for grubs or sap. Other times they claw the bark of hardwood trees to sharpen their claws, leaving long grooves in the tree trunk. This may explain the gouge marks made on the woodland trees around Brassknocker Hill, as a hungry bear desperately searching for food in this unfamiliar environment. Of course, no hard evidence or photographs of the beast were provided. Rather bizarrely, this series of events in the quiet British countryside was picked up by a Dutch newspaper known as Het Binnenhof. The title of their article read, when translated into English, Beast of Bath Destroys British Wood, and provided a sensationalist account of the events surrounding the case. As 1979 crossed over into 1980, more sightings of the beast were made, this time describing a large baboon-like animal. By the time of that summer, a year after the initial tree rippings were first noticed, a policeman, one inspector Michael Price, caught sight in the woods of what he thought was nothing less than a chimpanzee running around, although the identification of the animal was never fully confirmed. The local press quickly sought out comments from the police, and they got them quickly. We were sure this mystery creature would turn out to be a monkey of some sort, said Inspector Price. Despite this, reports of unknown creatures roaming the area continued. Two years later, the stories returned, only this time, rather curiously, the tales of a baboon, bear or something similar on the loose were replaced by sightings of something very different. A stag, 
polecat or even a Japanese deer were among the many varied candidates for the new beast of the hill. Then, one morning in the summer of 1984, reports started coming in to the local news desk of the Bath Chronicle of a strange looking creature holding up traffic on Brass Knocker Hill. I grabbed my notebook, said reporter Roger Green, who later became the editor of the Littlehampton Gazette. Colin Shepard, the photographer, grabbed his camera and we rushed out to the hill. The reports were pretty credible, so we were convinced that there was something out there. It was with slight trepidation that we entered the woods. After several minutes of searching, we came across the beast, by then calmly grazing in a field. It was an alpaca, and had escaped from a paddock somewhere nearby. It was later reunited with its owner by the police. But, quite obviously, this did not explain the earlier sightings of a bear-like animal, or claims of baboons and chimps roaming around in the woods. Needless to say, the mystery was never solved, and the localised hysteria surrounding the beast gradually died down, but the stories surrounding it remain as a vibrant part of local British folklore. These reports remind me of the tales of the Nandi Bear, in that it would appear that a wide range of different sightings describing very different creatures were lumped together to create a composite cryptid. The initial sighting of an animal closely resembling a spectacled bear is very interesting, considering that bears are known to leave scratches and scrapes on trees when they rub and sharpen their claws while looking for food. This beast may well have been another released exotic pet, set loose when its owner didn't like the idea of buying a costly license under the Dangerous Wild Animals Act, which took effect in the years just before the sighting was made. However, the reports of baboons, chimps and other animals in such a small area and time frame is harder to explain. They simply couldn't all have been escapees and releases from private collections, and many of these could be put down to the general hysteria surrounding the beast. However, we will never truly know what exactly went on in Brass Knocker Hill in the period of July 1979 to August 1983. Thanks for watching everyone. What do you think about this bizarre series of events? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Next week I'll be covering the multi-tuberculates, the so-called rodents of the Mesozoic. See you again soon. Cheerio.